Hello, and a very warm welcome to today's Nucleic Acid Insight webinar titled Optimizing LMP Formulations, Leveraging Monolithic Columns for Precise Insights and Improvement Strategies. I'm Lauren Coyle, an editor at BioInsights, and joining me today are Nate Pavlin and Tristan Kovovich, who will discuss chromatographic methods for downstream processing of LMPs, which is required to make the formulation applicable for in vivo applications and monitoring CQAs. After the presentation, we'll have a live Q&A session so feel free to pose your questions to our speakers using the ask a question box at the bottom of your screen and we'll try to get to them during the session. I'd also like to draw your attention to the resources tab on the right where you can find more information on the topics covered today. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters. Nate Pavlin has been a project manager in the analytics development department at Sartorius BIA separations for the past three years. Tristan Kovovich is a scientist in the process analytics department of Sartorius BIA separations. He holds an MA SCI in chemistry from Imperial College London. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Nate to kick us off with his presentation. So good morning, everyone. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you, Lauren, for a very nice um, introduction. Uh, so, the main topic of today's uh, webinar will be uh, newly developed um, LMP switcher platform. We will talk about a little how this platform can be utilized uh, at different um, um, LMP um, samples and, and so on. So, I will go just quickly to today's webinar. Um, agenda. So first, I will say a few words about our company, uh, Sartorius BS Operation. Um, I will do I will do short introduction to lipid nanoparticles. And then I want to show you or present to you our path fix and analytical solutions for different purposes. Then I will focus on the main topic of today's uh, webinar. Uh, LMP switcher platform, uh, which was designed for analysis of lipid nanoparticles. We will see the most important parameters we can determine using this, uh, this analytical platform. And then I will hand my word to my colleague here, uh, Tristan, who will tell you a little bit more about the behavior of LMPs on monolithic columns. And he will also show you some case studies how this uh, platform uh, could be used in uh, real life. So first, short introduction. Um, Sartorius Bia separation is located in the central of Europe, surrounded by Italy, Austria, and Croatia. Uh, we are the leading developers of monolithic technology. Uh, we produce uh, convective interaction media, uh, monolithic uh, chromatographic uh, columns. Uh, for more than 20 years now, um, we have 200 employees. Uh, we are leading experts in purification of large uh, biomolecules such as different viruses, for example, AAVs, adeno, or flu viruses. Uh, but we also work with some biomolecules such as pDNA, mRNA. Uh, and lately, quite a lot with uh, LMPs and exosomes and even uh, more of this. Um, we were acquired by Sartorius in 2020. Uh, and in Sartorius Center of Excellence, we offer solution for downstream process development, uh, solution for manufacturing of biological molecules, and solution for analytical method. Uh, development. So let's go to the main topic of today's uh, uh, lecture about uh, so to lipid nanoparticles. Um, lipid nanoparticles have emerged as a foremost non wire carrying vehicle for different uh, therapeutics. Uh, usually they are composed from nucleic acid and at least four. Uh, different um, lipid components, uh, such as ionizable lipid, who is responsible for 
for example, for example, interacting in, interacting with the cargo. Uh, then we have uh, pegylated lipid, um, which is on outer shell of the particle and preventing aggregation, fusion, and also shielding the surface charge of these particles. Then we have a phospholipid, or usually also called helper lipid, uh, which are responsible for structure. And the last, we have a cholesterol, which is responsible for particle integrity, rigidity, and fusion with the cell membranes. We encounter different challenges um, working with LMPs. One is, for example, immunogenicity of these particles and how we can target the desired organ in the, in, in the, in the body. Uh, so second challenge is their, their, their diversity and heterogeneity of, of these uh, particles and of course uh, instability of uh, lipid nanoparticles. Lipid nanoparticles are produced in quite simple process, usually uh, by mixing two different um, solvents or the solutions together. Uh, so we have aqueous phase uh, where usually mRNA is dissolved and this, this aqueous phase is usually at low uh, pH and we combine it in with uh, ethanolic solution usually containing different lipid building blocks. Um, then these two solutions are mixed together with uh, by uh, microfluidic mixing and at the end uh, we have um, nanoparticle lipid nanoparticle containing desired cargo um, here is one scheme uh, quite interesting uh, that not only the mixing is responsible for formation of the particle here we can see that at different phs during uh, lipid particle production uh, different rearrangements uh, are, are present or happened uh, to form the final particles at, at the end. So, yeah, um, the lipid nanoparticles are then delivered to the body in various ways. Um, they get absorbed on the, on the cell surface uh, and travel inside of uh, the cell uh, in endosome. Uh, then endosomal escape, escape is uh, happen. Uh, the cargo is released from the particles, and the transcription of protein is then uh, happened inside of the cell. So first, I want to talk a little bit about our PathFix analytical solutions. So here I have a presentation of one I will say typical. Uh, production process, uh, lipid nanoparticle uh, production, pr production process. So usually we start with uh, pDNA. Uh, producing pDNA involves usually quite a lot of different uh, processes and procedures, such as purification and linearization at the end. Um, and all these uh, proce processes uh, during the plasmid production can be really nicely um, controlled uh, and uh, yeah, control using our uh, PathFix PDNA analytical uh, platform. Uh, this platform is already available for our clients. Then when we are sure that we have uh, right and clean plasmid, uh, linearized plasmid, of course, we can put it in the IVT uh, reaction when mRNA is uh, produced. Also here, a lot of processes and a lot of uh, procedures which need uh, control and optimization. And for that reason, we developed uh, PathFix mRNA analytical uh, platform. I will say a few words about these two platforms a little bit later. So now we are with clean purified mRNA. Uh, this mRNA then goes into encapsulation to form lipid nanoparticles at the end. Uh, again, here, a lot of different processes, a lot of parameters uh, which we are interested in. 
Um, I will just uh, say a few of it. Uh, so encapsulation efficiency, for example, liquid composition of the particles, and of course, integrity, um, size, stability. And all these parameters can be um, nicely controlled using our newly development, uh, development de developed <laughs> sorry, uh, PadFix uh, LMP analytical uh, platform. But before we go to this uh, newly developed platform, I just want to say a few words about our already existing platforms. So about uh, PDNA, so first PDNA platform, this platform can be used for different purposes. Uh, which are, for example, we can determine the concentration of individual PDNA isoforms in uh, any process sample. We can, for example, monitor and optimize our purification process. We can optimize the lysis of E. coli cells, or we can also control ink plasmid linearization kinetics at the end. Um, here I have only one uh, example. Um, for, of, um, of um, how the chromatogram using this method will look like. So here is an example of uh, lysate of E. coli cells in which uh, plasmid DNA was uh, produced. Um, this is, we can see that this is quite complex sample um, uh, containing a lot of different uh, um, species or we can say also impurities uh, in the flow through of uh, chromatogram proteins and other impurities uh, from E. coli cells uh, are diluted. We have RNA here, elution of RNA from E. coli cells. And at the end, our uh, analyte of interest, so PDNA, we can see that uh, isoforms of this plasmid is nicely separated. So in every step of our production of plasmid, we can know the exact concentration of individual uh, plasmid isoforms. Um, mRNA platform uh, also developed for for uh, control and for uh, op optimizing our mRNA production process. With it, we can uh, really nicely monitor and optimi optimize IVT reaction. Uh, for example, we can quantify uh, mRNA in every step of the process, uh, and we can also control in the end mRNA integrity and also detect double-strand RNA if it's present in the sample. Uh, here was one, one example of uh, IVT reaction sample. Also here, quite complex mixture of different species. Uh, we can see here first uh, ARCA, capping reagent, is eluting. Then we have elution of uh, nucleotides, a plasmid template, and mRNA, of course, which is produced in the IVT reaction. So, so very complex, complex sample but we, get, we can obtain all the information in, only, in less than uh, five minutes. Okay, so now I wanna switch topics to our uh, LMP uh, switcher uh, platform. So we start with a conventional HPLC system, but due to very high complexity of LMP samples, we, see, we quickly see that the analytics using conventional uh, HPLC will not be enough. So we add additional analytical pump to the conventional uh, chromatography system. Uh, this additional pump enables us to use uh, two different sets of buffers to perform analytics and also enables us to uh, apply two different color modalities in the same in the same system so the system was then equipped with different uh, uh, detectors uh, conventional uv visible detector which is used for nucleic acid detection and we also added uh, multi-angle light scatter detector uh, especially for detection of particles and to detect size um, um, and to measure uh, size of the particles. 
as I said, we use two different column modalities. So first column is our sigma coh column. Uh, this column is in first phase of the analysis is used for separation of lipid nanoparticles from free uh, nucleic acid usually present in the LMP formulation. It's a hydrophobic interaction column and we use it uh, in uh, uh, this column have quite large uh, channels or pores um, to enable an analyzing quite big uh, particles, uh, quite big lipid nanoparticles. Uh, the second column is our CMAC SDVB column. Uh, this column is used for quantification of free and encapsulated nucleic acid. Uh, this is a reverse phase column and we use it in combination with uh, ion pairing reagent. Uh, both columns are connected in line and separated uh, through valve switching, uh, valve switching system. So these two columns enables us to have some kind of two dimension um, chromatography on the same uh, HPLC or chromatographic system. So here I have a, just a schematic um, presentation of a basic working principle of uh, this kind of uh, platform or this kind of uh, sample. So first dimension, uh, our OH column uh, and the second dimension, our SDVB column. I want to emphasize here that this LMP sample could be directly injected on the system with no system uh, sample pretreatment, uh, only dilution with the loading buffer is necessary. So there is no extensive sample pretreatment which can influence the sample um, stability and so on. Um, so usually the sample in uh, LMP is composed of some, uh, some uh, free uh, mRNA uh, or nucleic acids and lipid nanoparticles. Uh, sample is then injected on the, on the system. Uh, in the first phase of the analysis, lipid nanoparticles are catched on the OH column and the free nucleic acid travels ahead to the second column, SDVB column, where we can analyze and quantify the quantity of free uh, nucleic acid present in the sample. In the next step, we elude the particles from OH column. Uh, they travel through the system get diluted with uh, SDVB buffers and goes through the mass detector. Here we can observe the particles and of course also to determine their uh, or estimate, I would say estimate their size. Um, then uh, particles are catched on the SDVB uh, column. We open the particles so that we release the cargo from it and then the cargo can be quantified using UV visible detector. So in that way, we get the information about free, the quantity of free nucleic acid and the quantity of encapsulated nucleic acid in the same run. So this is a um, yielded chromatogram at the end. Um, so first, um, on the upper part of the chromatogram, we, we have a, a UV signal. At uh, the lower part of the chromatogram, we have a multi-angle light scatter detector. We can divide this uh, chromatogram in four different parts. So first, load part of the chromatogram. Here we can really uh, nicely observe if, if everything what, what was loaded on the, on the system is also binding to the columns. So the safety part of, of the chromatogram. Then we have uh, analysis one part. Uh, here we analyze uh, all free nucleic uh, acids present in the sample. So here is an example of uh, LMP encapsulated mRNA. And here we can see nicely the peak representing free mRNA. Then we have a third part of the chromatogram where LMPs are eluded from OH column. Uh, we can see that there is no signal in UV detector, but we have quite nice signal in the uh, MALS detector. Uh, and at the end of the fourth part of the chromatogram, uh, there is a uh, 
of the cargo, which was inside of the particles. So in that part of the metagram, we, uh, we um, see the encapsulated cargo, or, or in this case, encapsulated mRNA. So now I will go a little bit more in details uh, for the, in the parameters we can determine using, uh, using uh, this kind of uh, system configuration. So first parameter I want to talk about is encapsulation efficiency. So this is one of the, this is one in one of the most important parameter regarding LMPs. Uh, it provides us the amount of nucleic acid outside of LMP and inside of LMP. Usually, uh, ribogrine fluorescence assay is used for determination of encapsulation efficiency, um, but also some other methods, including digestion of LMP and determination of mRNA using the different spectroscopic or even chromatographic approaches. But all these techniques ha have quite extensive problem of um, of uh, sample pretreatment needed to perform some kind of uh, analysis. And we want to avoid that. Um, and that's why we try to develop a new approach for determination of encapsulation features. Um, here, I just want to show you two uh, interesting cases or example how this um, system or this uh, platform was used uh, to analyze uh, co-encapsulated LMPs. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, two different size mRNAs were co-encapsulated in the same particles. So one kilo, uh, kilo nucleotides big and one was four kilo nucleotides big uh, mRNA. Um, we can see that we achieve quite nice separation between these two mRNAs um, and in, in the part of free, there is a small two peaks representing free mRNA in that sample. Uh, here we have encapsulated mRNA. And of course, we can observe also the elution of the column in the mouse uh, detector. The encapsulation efficiency determined was quite high in, in this case of uh, samples around 98%. Uh, here is another interesting example. Uh, here we concapsulated, for example, mRNA and pDNA. Um, also here, very nice separation between free and encapsulated um, nucleic acid. Um, we can then integrate the peaks, uh, determine the encapsulation efficiency. Uh, in and also in the mouse the detector, we, we have very nice peak representing elution of uh, LMPs from OH column. We perform some basic uh, validation of the method. We check the linearity of the response, UV response uh, for both species, so for free and, MR and encapsulated mRNA. Uh, we can see that. Uh, the, the, the responses have good linearity in quite uh, uh, broad range of concentrations. Uh, what is interesting here also is that we have the same sensitivity of the method for both for free and for encapsulated mRNA. So for example, calibration curve for free uh, mRNA could also be used for encapsulated mRNA. Uh, we achieve quite, quite high sensitivity in terms of LOD and LOQ for, for this method. So for both nucleic acid, the uh, LOQ is around 10 nanograms or less. We also check the recovery of the method. Uh, so we uh, spike uh, free mRNA inside of the uh, LMP sample and we measure the recovery uh, or calculated the recovery of free and also for encapsulated uh, mRNA. And we can see that for all different concentration of spike, uh, we, we have quite a repeatable uh, recovery um, in most cases over 90, uh, eight, uh, 95%. We also check the encapsulation efficiency determination, a different 
uh, concentrations of, of LMP, and we see also that uh, the term encapsulation efficiency was quite uh, cost constant, uh, independent on the loaded uh, concentration of the loaded sample. Okay, this was about uh, encapsulation efficiency. Uh, now I want to touch also the, the second parameter which uh, can be determined or, or estimate using uh, this kind of uh, system. Uh, so I will talk about the LMP size and size dis distribution a little bit. So the size of LMPs is usually uh, quite important, especially when uh, for it, it some kinds of determine their ability to enter the, the, the cells. Usually LMPs in the, um, are in the range uh, in size from 50 to 200 uh, nanometers. And it's desirable that this LMPs has as uniform uh, distribution, size distribution as possible. Um, different techniques is used for, for size determination, such as DLS, NTA, and many different uh, microscopic techniques, including TEM or cryo-EM. Uh, here I have one example how NTA and cryo-EM uh, uh, result <laughs> or uh, size estimation uh, look like, uh, look, look like, uh, yeah. So here is the example how this uh, LMP switcher could be also used for size estimation. So this is the same uh, chromatogram I showed you before when we operate with uh, lipid nanoparticles encapsulating mRNA. Um, we measure mass uh, 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 scattering uh, at different uh, angles and we can uh, then um, um, fit these results at different uh, different angles using a mathematical model. Uh, in the in this case, uh, Barry uh, mathematical model was used. We can see that the fit is quite satisfied, satisfying, uh, and we determine the radius of these particles to be around uh, 82 uh, nanometers. And if we compare this result using uh, NTA, we can see that with the, the results are quite in good um, agreement. So this system can also be used for, for determination of uh, or estimation of the, size, of the size in the same run uh, as we determine also the encapsulation efficiency. So now I will... Um, give the word to my colleague uh, Tristan which will tell you more about uh, how this this platform can be used on also on other cases so Tristan. so yeah hi everyone uh, thanks Nate for this introduction to the to our topic today and to the presentation of our uh, of our platform and what I want to talk about now is go a little bit deeper into the uh, into the understanding of uh, of how LMPs behave in on uh, on these monolithic columns and also in the whole system as a whole. So here, first of all, let's go to the OH column, which is the first part, uh, the first part of this analytical setup. So here we have three mRNA and LMPs going injecting onto here under specific buffer conditions that enable hydrophobic interaction chromatography. And because LMPs have a much larger hydrophobic surface and a less pronounced charge than, than LMPs, um, they, uh, the F3 mRNA does not bind to the OH column, and the OH column passes on to the, to the, other, part, to the other part of the analysis, and the LMPs particles gets, um, are loaded onto the OH column under these conditions and can remain on, can remain on there. And then after you change the buffer into the elution buffer, you can then elute the LMPs from there by basically reducing your buffer composition, so your cosmotropic agent or your conductivity. Now, what we are showing here is then LMPs get bind and elute efficiently to and from the, the OH column. And here I am showing you a chromatogram of a, this is a separate, separate analysis that we are doing. Uh, this is basically loaded, LMPs are loaded onto the OH column 
and then elute it from there. This is a slightly larger, you know, a larger load. And what we get here is the load phase where we see nothing going into the flow through in the light scattering. In the UV, we, there is a free mRNA here. You just uh, drag it out. We can quantify that other ways. But then once we change the, the buffer composition into the elution buffer, we basically elute from here the LMPs. Um, and we can observe that by either multi angle light scattering or the UV detector. And what we, what we have here is that uh, before the OH column, uh, I am, here is the uh, nano tracking analysis size distribution. And then after the OH column, we, this, is the, this is also the NTA distribution. And what we see is that it's mostly, it's quite similar size distribution and size. So basically the particles remain here on, on here um, largely um, intact. Uh, we do uh, get rid of some of the larger particles in this, uh, in this column, but, but I will show you later that we, we have uh, quite good uh, mRNA recovery from here. So, and now, just as I've mentioned this, I, I want to mention that this obviously then doing this, the OH column also enables LMP purification. So basically you can bind the LMPs under specific conditions on there and you then elute it, um, elute it from there and collect the main fraction. And what you get is that from the crude uh, formulation to the encapsulated formulation, uh, you, uh, the, the encapsulation efficiency increases. And here is a LMP switcher chromatogram, like the one that Nate was describing before. And here in pink, we have the, uh, the UV of the encapsulated mRNA and uh, of the pure fraction. And then in, the, in brown, we have the crude fraction, uh, the, so the crude LMP formulation, and we see much more concentrated response from, from, the, from the purified fraction. So we, pure, so we concentrate the samples. And then we also decrease, uh, obviously, we get rid of the free mRNA mostly because uh, it doesn't bind to the OH column under those conditions. Um, and this is just a showcase of how, how LMPs also behave on this column. And this is the size distribution of the two. Now, as I said before, we have a very good uh, uh, recovery of uh, whole, uh, so the uh, mRNA as a whole on the, um, on the OH column. And this is a, another example where we are increasing from the crude fraction from 83% to 97% in the main induction peak. Now here, uh, the total mRNA content uh, was quantified. And here in the main illusion peak, we get 95% of the starting material. And then if we add uh, some of the uh, empty, no, so, sorry, some of the free mRNA, this gets close to 100% to, to of the recovery. So basically, we don't lose any mRNA for quantification on our LMP switching method. And now moving on to, to the second part of this analysis, this is the SDVB column, which is a reverse, kind of a, using a reversed phase mode here. So after the LMPs are eluted from, from the OH column, um, they are inline diluted with, uh, with the SDVB buffers and are, you can detect them on the mild detector. Here is worth mentioning that, uh, that these are, the buffer composition changes a little bit and LMPs are affected by each buffer. So the size determination, if you want to compare it directly here, is, uh, uh, should be done in, the, in this same buffer. But in like relative terms, when you're optimizing your formulation, um, this is something uh, very comparable that you, can, that you can use. And so the LMPs go past the mouse detector and they bind onto the SDVB column. Now, on the SDVB column, this is a very strong interaction. And what, can, uh, what happens here is that you cannot, because of the large hydrophobic surface of, M of uh, lipid nanoparticles and the very hydrophobic uh, solid phase SDVB column, you cannot elute particles as a whole from there. So what you do have to do is you increase a citonitrile gradient and you open up the particles. So you basically elute separate, uh, separate components of the particles. These are then the mRNA and the lipids, the four lipids of your uh, LMP composition. Now, we also uh, prove this additionally by switching the multi-angle light scattering detector. So from this position, uh, you can switch it to, to the end. So after the UVBs, and uh, what you do get here is then again, uh, LMP is looking from the OH column and then, you know, opening up the particles from the SDVB column and 
then you, UV is quantified. And on the mass detector, you don't get anything. So no particle response there. And here is an example chromatogram of this, where you have the free mRNA, the encapsulated mRNA, and uh, you can see no particles uh, in the multi-angle light scattering detector. So actually, the SDVB column is a good way to open up your particles without, uh, without any other intervention. And you can then quantify its individual components, so the UV with the mRNA, and then also other ways you can use for quantifying, uh, for quantifying lipids, uh, but you then have to use some other detectors for that, for that as well. And now, if we move on a little bit to the, to the use cases of, of how you can use the, this platform, uh, of how you can use this platform for, you know, different options, you know, for optimizing your formulations and so on. Now, first, let's talk about, let's talk about optimizing your formulations. So one of the things you might want to optimize then is the, you know, you're optimizing the encapsulation efficiency. Here, let's say you're optimizing the NP ratio. So we here performed two different encapsulations of particles with, a, with an M fix 4, so an mRNA of 4,000 base pairs uh, of our in-house standard. And we encapsulated it with in, in kind of standard compositions. Uh, and we, so here we changed the NMP ratio, so the ratio of the ionizable lipids to, to the mRNA. And here in the top chromatogram, we get a chromatogram where the MP ratio is 10, so 10 times the molar ratio of uh, lipids to, the, to, to each nucleotide. And we get uh, an, here an encapsulation efficiency of 97%. We can clearly see an encapsulated mRNA, a free mRNA. And down here, the MP of 1, much less lipids, so much less efficient encapsulation. We get, uh, we get a much smaller uh, response from the UV and uh, from the encapsulated and a larger one from the free. So we get an encapsulation efficiency of uh, 20%. Now, these are all to scale chromatograms. So what we can see is that the mouse response multi-angle light scattering is much higher in the MP of 10 than in the MP of 1. So in this case, basically, the formulation was done by using the same, uh, the same lipid concentration and then changing the mRNA concentration. But then for the analysis, it was diluted back to the same mRNA concentration, which means that obviously here are much less lipids in this formulation and you can see much, much less particles and you know, much, much more concentrated mRNA per particle. And then we here, interestingly, here we also observe a third part in this chromatogram which are uh, mRNA, they are mRNA-related compounds uh, eluted later in the, this reverse phase gradient, so with more acetonitrile. And these are for sure mRNA-related, are more hydrophobic and can be quantified as well. So this is something that you might, might, wanna, might be interesting about how uh, if you have some impurities forming during your formulation, and you can see that Obviously, in this case, much more ionizable lipid uh, produces a, quite a lot of this, and with the much less ionizable lipid compared to the mRNA, we basically have uh, we have almost none of these impurities. Now, uh, just uh, here putting in as well, these are the same and the same experiments. I want to uh, put in the uh, size determination as well. And we, uh, so we determined the mass mode size here with over 114 nanometers and the NTA was of 105 and here 130 by mass and NTA of 120 nanometers. You can see the difference, the difference in size here. And as I, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, the mass response is, uh, is, you know, much lower in, in this case compared to the mRNA and we can kind of estimate the loading of mRNA as well. If you then, you know, you, you do a calibration curve, you can do a mass of uh, mRNA per, per, let's say, per, per lipid. Or here you can, uh, you can kind of estimate that, for example, in this case, there, there is less encapsulated mRNA, but also much less mass response. Uh, you can estimate that the loading here is about three times as much of mRNA per particle than, than in the first, in the first, in the MP of 10 ratio. Now let's move on to the to the other use case that is also a very interesting one, and that's uh, mRNA integrity. Uh, in our de uh, uh, department, my colleagues uh, not long ago developed a method on the SDVB column for for mRNA fragmentation 
uh, determination, so for the mRNA integrity. And this was done a very sim with a very similar method that we use on this LMP switcher. So it, this method is also very applicable to the, to the LMP switcher analytical tool. So what you basically do is that on the SWB column, which then you use uh, ion pair reverse phase chromatography, uh, you get a peak like this in the response in the UV. And then what you do here is you, you kind of want to be comparing this to CGE as a capillary gel electrophoresis as a gold standard in this case. And there you see clearly, you know, you see a nice fragmentation part and then a sharp peak. But in chromatography, you don't see it like that. But you do see some fronting and then you see a sharper peak here. So what you do is then you use the first derivative of this uh, of the UV response and where there is a maximum of the first derivative. So where really this peak starts going up, there you split the peak and you integrate these two parts. And then this first part would be uh, would be the, uh, the the fragmented mRNA. And then this second part would be uh, so this would be the intact mRNA. And then uh, this correlates nicely uh, with CGE, which is described in this in this article. Now we were here aging LMPs, so we we took some LMP samples that had both free and encapsulated mRNA, and we we you know we heated them up 35 degrees, and for four days we were we were aging them. So, and then what happened here is that we see a fragmentation occurring in the free mRNA part. So this red is from day zero. And then, you know, moving up to, to day two and four, we can see a large fragmentation here, more fronting of this peak. And in the encapsulated part, this also goes up, but less so, less pronounced. And this can both be monitored simultaneously. And now to show you in a little bit uh, more detail here, um, I want to say is that here you can basically measure the stability of your, um, of your LMPs simultaneously and separately for both the free mRNA and the encapsulated mRNA. And from day zero, here we already see there is a, uh, this is the free mRNA chromatogram and the encapsulated mRNA chromatogram. So even in day zero, the, the free mRNA is more fragmented. Uh, this is due to also the, the sample handling and the sample encapsulation beforehand. And then this sample, you know, this uh, free mRNA fragments very quickly into day one to 69% and then to 79% to day four, while the encapsulated mRNA also is fragmenting more from 15 to 19 to 30, and it is increasing, but much less so. So here we can see how well the, uh, the uh, mRNA inside our particles is, uh, is protected, so, you know, also might want to uh, estimate how non-aqueous uh, those conditions are. And then in this case, when we were when we were aging this, the so the encapsulation efficiency remained the same through all this. So we can really see that this is the change in the free mRNA and this is the change in the encapsulated mRNA. So now let's move on to, to another part. Uh, this we will go back a little bit to 1D uh, 1D chromatography, but this is a very important parameter for LMP, so we, we have to mention this here as well. And this is the lipid composition. Here, we developed a method on using the C4 HLD column, which is a monolithic column we produce. It's in principle, it's uh, the most hydrophobic, hydrophobic interaction uh, column we have, but it can also be used in a reverse phase mode more uh, like we, we use it here. So what is a real advantage here of this method is that you uh, you inject the real the, the formulation directly onto the column because this is a monolith it's appropriate for large biomolecules you can you can inject directly onto the monolith and the lipids uh, the LMPs bind very strongly to this C4 HLD column and like I was mentioning before for the SDDB column um, uh, this is a very strong um, interaction here and you cannot you, it's very hard to elude intact particles from here so what you do do is then you increase um, isopropanol concentration and you basically dissolve the particle again. Now here you see we have good separation of all four components, pegylated lipid, phospholipid, cholesterol, and ionizable lipid. You separate them and then you can, you can quantify them. And then in the UV, you can also observe your, your mRNA. 
Now here we use a charged aerosol detector uh, because those lipids have no chromophores, so you can't, you know, you can't do it with UV. You have to use something else, either something like this or ELSD or a mass spec or something like mass detector. So this, what is useful for, is basically for, for you know, screening your, uh, screening your formulations and then seeing what the actual lipid composition is. So here we have an example where this is the lipid mix, the starting lipid mix, where you have a ratio of these four lipids like this, and then you encapsulate, and then this is straight the formulation after encapsulation, and you have this, so you have a different, a different ratio of those lipids here. So if, if you want to know, you know, the actual composition, uh, then you, you, you want to do this and see the, the real here, and just by injecting directly, you can do that. And then also for any downstream processing that you're doing of the LMPs, uh, then you can confirm whether you are losing some lipid somewhere or, or, or you know, something like that. Here we showcase this for, as I mentioned before, purification on the OH column. And this here, you see that we don't drastically change the, the, the lipid composition during this interaction. So to conclude, we here, present today an LMP switcher chromatographic tool, which is an all-in-one analytical tool, a two-dimensional chromatographic tool that is designed to monitor the crucial parameters in the, in the LMP formulation. So uh, we can measure encapsulation efficiency. Uh, this is all without any sample treatment. And then yeah, mRNA, we can quantify mRNA, and then we can also, uh, we can also quantify the integrity of the mRNA. And then using the multi-angle light scattering detector, we can also do size determination and distribution. This is a uh, versatile uh, analytical tool and is suitable for analyzing uh, different types of LMP samples, including mRNA LMPs, pDNA LMPs, co-encapsulated LMPs, and also most, others, uh, most other cargos. And this enables streamlined analytics for efficient optimizations of your formulations. Now, the behaviors of those were widely investigated, uh, the behaviors of LMPs on monolithic columns, and uh, it's showcasing how they can be, uh, the monolithic columns can be applied to, to other purposes as well regarding LMPs. Uh, mentioned before, this eliminates the need for central pretreatment. This is fully customizable. Uh, if you have different samples uh, or so on, different properties, you can tailor your, you know, like your column, like your buffer, buffer, and so on. And uh, obviously, this can be integrated with our already existing platforms for pDNA and mRNA, and it offers a comprehensive control over the entire process from pDNA all the way down to LMPs. Now, this concludes our talk today, but I will just finish up a little bit on a lighter topic uh, to invite you to the Monolith Summer Symposium uh, that will be going on in June this summer at the Slovenian Seaside, um, uh, where you can listen to many different topics regarding bioprocessing, uh, purification and analytics of large biomolecules and also regarding you know, specific uh, monolithic aspects of uh, monolithic technology. We want to thank uh, the company for you know, supporting this work uh, so that we could develop this. Uh, and then we want to especially uh, thank our team, the PC4 Process Analytics team on the picture here, which we are part of, uh, for you know, helping us develop this. Uh, getting all the data and so on. And then we also want to thank the PC2 and PC3 departments for supporting us with, with other analytics and their, their material. So thank you very much for, for your attention. Uh, I will now stop sharing my screen and uh, we can move on to, to any questions that you might have. Thank you, Nate and Trista, for a great presentation there. So as we said, we're going to start our Q&A. So please keep your questions coming in and we'll get to as many as we can. And any that we don't get to, we will answer by email. So the first question here is just, can you detect um, degradation products in LMP formulations? Um, and Nate, would you like to take this one first? 
uh, yeah, I can go ahead. Uh, so I've uh, um, I've mentioned some of this already in the talk, but yeah. So integrity, so the fragmentation of mRNA into shorter fragments, the shorter nucleotides, or you know even mononucleotides or oligonucleotides, you can detect by the fragmentation assay that uh, that I've described. Uh, you know using the method of integration uh, with the SDBB column. Then regarding other impurities, I also mentioned there is a third part of intact mRNA that we separate on the on the uh, on our SDBB method, and those are more let's say hydrophobic impurities, and those can be can be quantified as well and and compared on there. So both of those are uh, we are capable of detecting on using this method. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, so then the next question is, can this be used for quantification of a more polydisperse or bimodal population, such as those seen with lipoex, lipolexes or polyplexes with sizes extending into micron range? And Tristan, would you like to hear take this one? Yeah, I, I will take this one. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I think it's possible. There will be some limitation uh, regarding size, for example. So the particles shouldn't be bigger than channels of our columns, and we are limited here at six microns. Um, and there is also a possibility that some kind of physical entrapment will happen uh, using very really big uh, particles. But I think other and okay, and there is a second um, second thing about that we should or we should open the particles then. So this opening of the particles will be another challenge uh, with, with different particles, um, but I think it's possible, yeah, of course. But we never, sorry, but we never really try to, to put some kind of different, uh, like lipoplexes or some, some um, particles on this system yet so it will be interesting yeah i, I want to just add one thing as well so we've tried some uh uh we yeah, lipoplexes we haven't tried liposomes have been done right mm -hmm. uh okay. and they, they work quite nicely and then you can extend like in the mals phase if you the multi-angle light scattering if you uh increase the gradient there you don't get a sharp peak like that but you can see some of the heterogeneity in your in your samples uh, this is regarding from the OH evolution. So those like fine tuning of the method can be done to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, you know, if you have more heterogen, if you want to address more heterogeneity and, yeah, but, and yeah. all the things like that, very, very nice. That's great. Thank you both. Um, so our next question here is what size of nucleic acid can be analyzed using this analytical setup? Uh, so yeah, we've, uh, We've done uh, from, let's say, well, all haven't been tried, but we have done like 1,000, 4,000, 2,000, those, and then even smaller, you know, up to in, down to the oligonucleotide size, so those can be can be detected. Uh, we believe, you know, it's also possible to go higher. We have gone higher with uh, very large uh, PDNAs uh, uh, of, uh, let's say, 15,000 kilobase pairs of a PDNA of our standard PFIX-15. And that also worked quite nicely, but it was important, very important to have large pore sizes for particles mm -hmm. like that. Because even for for uh, PDNA on its own, it's important to have large pore sizes. And here it was even more important. That's great. Thank you. Tristan, is there anything you wanted to add on top of that? Or... Oh. <laughs> no? Wonderful. So then our next question here is, how do I check empty and partial particle and full particle in LNP? Mm -hmm. This is not possible using this kind of uh, this kind of system. So this platform do not distinguish between empty and fulls. But we develop in new methods. Um, I think Tristan can add a, 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 anything about uh, some additional explanation uh, to 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 have uh, information also. Uh, about how many particles are empty and how many particles are full. Um, I don't know, Tristan, if you want to add something to yeah to that. Uh, yeah, this uh, so the hydrophobic interaction chromatography in principle 
cannot separate uh, those. So, but yeah, other other uh, other column modalities can be used to do that. So, you know, if you want to know more, you can contact us then directly. We'll uh, we'll try to answer you. And uh, yeah, this is uh, being developed. That's great. Thank you both. Um, so then we have what different lipid compositions have you tried analyzing with the LMP switcher? Okay, yeah, we've obviously for, for like purposes uh, other than that, but also this, uh, there have been tried, like for example, those that are of commercial, uh, known commercially that have been used for different vaccines. Uh, we have then also tried many, uh, you know, different, different, let's say, pegylated lipid content, different uh, NMP ratios, and so on. So, you know, in terms of in terms of LMPs with ionizable lipids, we have gone quite a wide range, and uh, this method works quite well. Uh, so, uh, not a lot of tuning is needed. But yeah, for if you go into more extremes and other particles, then you know you need to change the the compositions a bit. Amazing, thank you. Um, so Nate, would you maybe like to take this one? It's what is the ranges of RNA sizes evaluated and can we go as low as 100 NT? Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we per I think really there is no really um, determined range how, how big or how small RNA should be to be analyzed with this kind of um, um, machine or platform. Uh, we try also some examples of guide uh, RNA, which are usually very small, around 100 uh, nucleotides, and we, we, we have very good results. So, and also uh, we try to perform some experiments on quite big uh, RNAs, uh, sample amplifying RNAs, and uh, we obtain quite good uh, uh, results. Um, as uh, Tristan already said, this, these methods are very ad uh, uh, adjustable, so we can we can change the method to, to serve our needs. So if there is some different RNAs, um, um, the method could be optimized, and I think we we we, we can come to the desired uh, desired uh, result at the end. That's wonderful, thank you. Um, and just another one here, is this method applicable also to other lipid nanoparticles such as liposomes, lipid nanoemulsions or lip lipoplexes? Yeah, so liposomes uh, have been done before. Uh, we also believe it's, it's possible of doing uh, other ones, but uh, not, not a very broad range has been, has been tested yet. Amazing, thank you. And I think we have time for just one more question here. Um, I have made LMPs with guide RNAs and base editor RNA of size six kilobytes. To remove unencapsulated gRNA, I do buffer exchange with 20 kilodNA membrane. Do you have any suggestions on how to remove unencapsulated base editor RNA? mRNA, sorry. Yeah, this is a very good question and something uh, uh, I was actually describing before. So the OH column, as you know, the OH column, in this case, those uh, the monolithic OH column for hydrophobic interaction chromatography can be used to separate LMPs from any of the free nucleic acids. And as this is done as the first part of, of our uh, switcher platform, it can also be done separately for, for purification purposes. So yeah, this is... Uh, it can be done by by using this this columns. Amazing. Well, thank you, Nick and Tristan, for answering those questions. But that is all we've got time for today. So any questions we didn't get round to, we will reply to by email. This webinar will be available on demand tomorrow. So look out for an email from us with the link. And all that's left is to thank Nate and Tristan once again for a great presentation. And thank you to our audience for listening. And we we'll hope you'll join us again soon. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.